he's almost kicked him as opposed to stamped on him. I think if there was more force that continued to be applied after just the initial contact, then I would lean towards the red. But I think the fact he hasn't sent him off, I'm, I'm overall comfortable with that. But I do think it's a yellow. It's more of a flick than a stamp. But I can see what you mean, Jan, absolutely. And, and he put himself in a, in a position uh, with that kind of challenge. It, it, it is dangerous. But I think because it was more of a flick and he wasn't coming in at any particular speed. Now, listen, Jan has a different opinion. Nadim thinks one thing. You go and ask somebody else, they'll think another. It, it, it is one of those. It just is not the worst challenge that I've seen. It, it was clumsy at best, but I think it was just on the right side of not getting the red card. Uh, of course, every time Manchester United win, Jan, you bring up an argument that you had with Craig, yeah? So just give us a, a brief synopsis <laughs> about what that was about. <laughs> well, Craig is my favourite discussion partner, I have to say that, because I like his edge. Oh. But uh, I, I said that just... just it's, I guess it started when they came back from the World Cup. There was a, a small game uh, uh, in, the, in the Cup against Burnley. Uh, there was a game where we expect Burnley to do well would would company getting to play and and I I, th I think that was the time at least for me that I saw the shape that Ten Hag is trying to get there you saw that the players understood what he was doing and then at the same time you get individual players turning their game on like Rashford like De Gea and I must also say now in the last couple of weeks Sancho Sancho looks like a new signing for them and that's why I'm seeing that you see weaknesses of the top two team they're still they're still there to lose the title but Manchester United could be in that position of, of winning the league and I'm I'm 100% sure of that and I'm, I'm guess also that Manchester United I guess if you if we ask Ten Hag he would say that's rubbish because the, the, he would say maybe we need one or two players and he's right but this season they could end up being the surprise champion. So the, the, the brief synopsis, which we didn't really get there from Jan, was the fact that you believed in United and Craig didn't. No, no, no. Was, no. was that it? Well, Absolutely. Yeah, 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 well, 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 well sort, of, sort of. And then I reminded Jan that you had them fifth. Well, yes, yeah, yeah, but well, this is interesting, Jan, because even though you believe in Manchester United, Craig believed in them more because you had them finishing fifth. Absolutely. And that is nothing, nothing to do with trying to be wise to know. This is so, <laughs> hum, somehow Ten Hag has developed this team. I did, did I think that he will turn this around as quick as he did? That's why I tried to say that the first game after the World Cup was the moment I realised that they have the shape, they have the organisation. Ten Hag has got to his players and they understand what he wants to do. And, and the rest is, is winning culture. The rest is match-winning displays for so many players. But, but Craig, congratulations. You said it before the season. It's just like six, seven months ago. That's fine as well. I changed my mind. <laughs> actually, actually, I, actually, I probably did. I, actually, to be fair, I, I probably didn't. But, but no, I, look, I, I, I've, never, I've never... I've enjoyed watching... I mean, the more teams that are vying for any league, the better. Of course. We've discussed on this show the worrying thought of, from a neutral point of view, from a league, from a, from a competitive edge, Manchester City's potential domination, right? Now, Arsenal or United may or may not disrupt that this year, but I really don't know anybody who doesn't want to see the strongest teams that have got the capabilities of vying for a Premier League would want them to be strong. So the important thing was they made the right decision with the manager in the summer. Yeah. It was a hugely difficult start. I mean, hugely. But it's been crystal clear as the season's gone on that this guy's reputation in CV and no-nonsense sort of running of the dressing room and the club has been there for all to see. The only thing I had after the Christmas period was they did play three of the teams that you would consider more cannon fodder yeah. at the time. It was Nottingham Forest at the time, uh, Bournemouth and, and, and one other. And they came through that, obviously, but then they had some bigger tests. But it's not a surprise that they're doing a lot better. I think it is a surprise that they're as close to being in the title race as they are. It is a surprise that Marcus Rashford is playing as well as he is, because these, these are things that... At the start of the season, if you'd said Rashford was going to be in this goal-scoring run, yeah. it's been a phenomenon, an absolute phenomenon. And United would be pretty much still hanging in, in the title race come the end of February. There wouldn't have been too many takers. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.